In this lesson, we will be covering the available communication options between the computer software and the FCX2000. The first step is to set the communication language. There are two languages that the FCX2000 uses, GPGL, which is GraphTech's proprietary language, and HPGL, which is a generic language. Generally, if you plan to use the GraphTech Windows driver, Cutting Master 4, or GraphTech Pro Studio, the language should be set to GPGL. If you are using a third-party software application, check the manual to see what language it uses to drive the FCX2000. To configure the command language on the FCX2000, press the pause menu key. Press the up arrow key for interface. Press the 2 key for command. This displays the menu where GPGL, HPGL, or Auto can be selected. Currently it is set to Auto, but let's go ahead and switch it to GPGL. Once a command language is chosen, press Enter to bring the cutter back to ready status. The second step is configuring the communication port you plan to use. The FCX2000 has three communication ports located in the back underneath the table. USB, LAN or local area network, and RS-232C serial port. Let's review the purpose of each type as well as their configurations. The first port we'll discuss is the USB port. This is the most common and simple method of communication, which offers plug-and-play operation. In other words, once you plug the USB cable into the computer, the software connects with minimal configuration required. Next is the Ethernet port, which is for your local area network. While this may initially take a little longer to configure, it will save time by allowing any device on the network to instantly communicate with the plotter, without the need to be in the same room as the cutter. Lastly is the RS-232C port, or what is also called a serial port. This is an older type of port that is still in use by older legacy computers and software. While serial ports are not used as much, they still provide very reliable communication to the cutter. The serial protocol settings on the cutter must match the serial protocol in the computer application in order for them to communicate. Let's start with the USB configuration. Once you have plugged your cable into the cutter and computer, open your software and choose the USB port. Some software apps, as shown here, will show the name of the FCX2000. Lastly, let's go over some of the settings and options for a serial or RS-232C port. To get to the settings, first press the pause menu key to access the menu. Press the up arrow key for interface. Press the up arrow key to jump to page 2. There we can press the 2 key for RS-232C. And here is where we can set the protocol. We won't go into the details of each of these, but all we have to do is to make sure that these match the settings in the software. Here we have a setup of a 9600 baud rate, 8 data bit, a parity of none, and a hardware handshake which is a standard setting. Now we have to set our software to the same settings. Keep in mind that your software will set up differently, so we suggest that you review your software manual for instructions on how best to configure your software for a serial interface. In this case, we will show how this is done within Cutting Master 4. Let's go ahead and open Cutting Master 4. We've installed this already, but if you plan to use Cutting Master 4, review the lesson using Cutting Master 4. First, click on the FCX2000 cutter. Click on the Setup pull-down menu. Click on Setup Properties. Click on the Properties icon at the top. This will show the interface communication properties. At the top left, we can choose the port. In this case, we will choose Serial. Just below, we can set all the settings such as the baud rate, 8-bit data rate, and so on. 
After configuring the serial port protocol, click OK. Since each LAN network is set up differently, we recommend involving your network administrator to configure this connection. To access the network settings with the FCX2000, press the pause menu key. Press the up arrow key for interface. Press the up arrow key again. Press the 3 key to access the local area network or LAN settings. Here is where the DCHP can be enabled or disabled. It always defaults to disabled, which allows us to change the settings manually, such as IP address, subnet mask, and the gateway. If you plan to use DCHP, then press the 1 key. Press the 1 key to enable it, and then press enter to apply. Once the settings are adjusted, the plotter will initialize and the default screen will display. These are the three forms of communication with the FCX2000. Regardless of which method you plan to use, it's always a good idea to test the connection. This may be as simple as drawing a square in your software and sending it to the cutter. Just remember to remove any tools that are attached to the tool head first. In the next lesson, we will discuss installation and features of the powerful Cutting Master 4 plugin software.